Start with a Shadow Blade. Mantra cancel it. M1 faint. Shadow Blade. M1 faint. Shadow Blade. M1. Sh faint again, and then Shadow Blade. There's so many inputs here, I don't even know what's going on. Yo, what is up guys? Lord Seno here. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about why Heavy is pretty underrated. I've been using the Battle Axe for the past 3 days. I've gotten to level 35 on 2 accounts, and pretty much just only been using the Battle Axe. And I've learned a lot of things. Heavy is a lot better than people say it is, but I still do believe it's the worst weapon class right now. There are a lot of downsides that Heavy has, and there are some advantages that it does have. And I'm going to be talking about both, and how you can really maximise this weapon class in order to get the full value out of it. So let me start off by saying what you probably already know, which is that Heavy is the hardest class to use. If you don't like a challenge, then you should definitely not use this weapon class. While medium and light weapons benefit more from a fundamental understanding of how the M1 combat works, Heavy benefits more from understanding how mantra interactions work. In other words, if you're someone who doesn't like using a lot of mantras, and you prefer just to dodge and parry and M1, then Heavy is probably not for you. If you're someone who uses mantra mix-ups a lot, and you're someone who likes to be unpredictable with how they play, then you may have a lot of success with Heavy. One of the biggest weaknesses that I would say that is true about Heavy is that it relies a lot on stats. Heavy users can be stat checked really easily. A stat check is when a less skilled player will simply beat you because they have better armor or higher weapon level or a better weapon. Heavy is really prone to being stat checked, so if you're fighting someone at a much higher level than you, then you have a lot less chance of beating them than if you were to use a stiletto or a sword. Now the reason for this is because of how M1 priority works. Because Heavy swings so slow, you're naturally going to be letting your opponent get much more hits onto you, simply because of the fact that during your swing you cannot defend yourself, so the window at which you're vulnerable is higher, so as a result enemies will be able to hit you more than if you're swinging a really fast stiletto. This means that if you're fighting someone who has a really strong weapon, like a, let's say a Shadiktana, then they only need to land like a few hits onto you to beat you, and since you have less of a window to defend yourself, they're naturally going to be able to land more hits on you, and so it would be different if you were to use a sword or a stiletto, where you'd be able to defend against most attacks. With heavy, you kind of have to accept the fact that you're going to be hit sometimes. So those are the main weaknesses of heavy. You can be stat checked really easily, it requires a high amount of skill expression, and it focuses a lot on mantra combats. Now let's talk about the advantages, and there are probably more than you think. So the first advantage that you really get as a heavy user is the criticals. Heavy criticals almost always insta guard break. They're really slow, but that doesn't always matter. If you get momentum on your opponent, and you make them defend and panic a bit, then you could easily get a guard break on them. As well as this, heavy hits do a lot of posture damage, especially if you're using greatsword because of heavy hitter. And as a result, your enemy really has one less option to deal with you. They can only parry or dodge your moves because blocking is fatal. So the next strength that heavy has is its mantra combination potential. So in this game, there are moves that I like to call free hit moves, and basically these moves will basically almost always guarantee an M1 if your opponent tries to parry them. Since these moves guarantee an M1, basically you have the most advantage using a heavy weapon since you'll be doing the most damage afterwards. Some examples of these moves are Gale Lunge, Ice Lunge, Exhaustion Strike, Shadow Blade, and Rapid Punches. These are moves that if your opponent fails to parry, especially with moves that you can cancel in the middle of them, like Rapid Punches, you'll be able to get a free M1 off, and with a heavy weapon you're looking at 40 to 50 damage. You're getting around double the amount of value that you would get if you hit them with something like a light weapon. This is Heavy's biggest strength, generally speaking. It was the reason why Heavy Wind was the meta before, it was because Gale Lunge and Heavenly Wind. If your opponent whiffed the parry, then you just get a free Heavy M1, and you do a lot of damage to them. So another huge strength that I say Heavy has is the fact that you have a bigger faint window. The faint window is the duration of time in which you can actually press M2 and the swing will be cancelled. As a heavy user, you have the option to faint really early or faint really late, and this can have really varying effects depending on how your opponent plays. If your opponent plays based on prediction, which they are under the assumption that you would simply just faint really early and then M1 afterwards, then they'll try and dodge while you're still fainting, which will allow you to get pretty much a free M1 onto them. 
Swords, knives, and fists and guns cannot do this because their faint window is much smaller. As a heavy user, you have more offensive fake out options. And that segues into the next category, which was very similar to the one I mentioned before, which was the free hit mantras. As you can see right now, I'm using a lot of spell feints, only with one move, Shadow Blade, and essentially I'm able to get free hits onto my opponent, even though they have insane defense. Like, look at this person. This person really knows how to play the game. Like, if I'm using my normal M1s, I cannot get a single hit onto them. They're too good at the game. But I use Shadow Blade, I mix up with my M1s and do spell cancels, and essentially, what is actually happening here is the heavy swing is so slow, my opponent does not even know whether they're parrying an M1 or a mantra. This works the best with mantras that can really just blend into your swing animation, like Shadow Blade, Strong Left, Rapid Punches, Exhaustion Strike. You see why I like Shadow, right? Because it's not even about Crypt Blade, it's the fact that Shadow Blade is one of the best mantras for heavy users. Like, you cannot go wrong with this. You see the offensive mix-up capabilities that I'm using with it right now, and there's also a tech which you can use for Shadow Blade, which allows you to use it infinitely, and that will really throw your opponent off guard. They don't know if you're M1-ing, they don't know if you're about to faint, they don't know if you're about to use Shadow Blade, they don't know if you're about to spell cancel. There are four different options that you can be doing, and all of the animations look very similar, so your opponent has a 1 in 4 chance of getting, actually being able to react to what you're doing, and they've got to be like so goated to actually predict and react to these spell cancels. Like I said before, this person has insane defense. Like, if I only use my M1s and feints, I wouldn't have been able to hit this person. But by using these mantras which allow me to do the, the animation cancels and just blending my animations in, it's a lot easier for me to mix up and actually break through their guard. This is a clip where I use Shadow Blade and mantra cancelling to its fullest extent. And you can see I'm about to start now. Start with a Shadow Blade, Mantra Cancel it, M1 Faint, Shadow Blade, M1 Faint, Shadow Blade, M1, sh Faint again, and then Shadow Blade. There's so many inputs here, I don't even know what's going on. But I hit him like seven times, and he scared parried all of them. And that's only because the heavy swing animation is so slow. It gives you the opportunity to blend in attacks with your weapon. You would simply not be able to do something like that with a light weapon. You can do it with medium weapons, but it's a lot harder. So to do the free hit rapid punches, you essentially just cast rapid punches and then spell cancel afterwards. This will cancel the mantra while you're in the middle of the mantra. Obviously I'm not using a heavy weapon right now, but what you do want to be doing is as soon as you cancel the mantra, you want to wait until your opponent sees the, the mantra and they do a scared parry and you want to hit them afterwards and it's a free M1 just like that. Rapid punches is a really unique spell in the way it works and it's really underappreciated so I just wanted to share this tip with you guys. Let me clarify, I'm not saying that Heavy is a really good weapon class, I hope you guys understand that. I'm just saying that it's a lot more viable than people think, and it's not completely unusable. I've been winning most of my matches, although I have been losing a lot more than if I used the Stiletto Sword, I've still been winning over 70% of my matches. A lot of the advantages that Heavy has are theoretical, and they're pretty intangible compared to something like the swing speed of a Stiletto or the range and damage of a sword. In that sense, it's really difficult to make the most of it, and as a result, you can be sitting there for hours training and practicing, and still not getting the full potential of the weapon. I will say that using Heavy forced me to learn how to properly mantra feint and cancel, and it gave me a better appreciation as to how useful these tools can be. It's really good experience, and I recommend you guys try it, just to learn how to use mantra cancelling properly and so that when you go back to medium, you can make the most of it and use the experiences that you've learned, not only to actually be better with medium and spell cancelling, but also to fight heavy users. This build that I'm currently making is planned to be a Crypt Blade build. I was making one before, but I got lied to about the <laughs> stat requirements for all the dead gods, so I cannot get that on a Crypt Blade build. It just requires way too much stats. And so I'm trying for a different build right now, and I think it's going pretty well. Um, not get, been getting too lucky with the cards. I am getting Fishman on like every single roll, which is annoying, but it is what it is. In terms of the progression, I'm having fun, and that's all that matters really. Thank you guys for watching this video. Hope to see you in the next one. Peace out.